Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel and the series I am doing on how to start a school one on one teacher school builders. So hopefully you are a teacher school builder and you are getting a lot of value out of these videos as well as the article that is linked below. Remember, they go hand in hand. You need to read the article and as the video comes up, it will have an attachment to the video and send you on over here. So just in case you are picking this up in the middle, I just wanted to let you know how our program works. For those who don't know me, I am Cindy Lumpkin. I am a teacher and I started a school when it was not popular over eight years ago. It seems like so long ago. Um, it has been one of the best things that I've ever done. And to be real honest with you, I am so excited where um, the field of education is going, particularly where it relates to teachers actually started out as little entrepreneurs starting these educational programs, whether they are micro schools, learning pods, whether they are um, doing homeschooling type things. I am here for it all. My heartbeat now is to help frustrated teachers thrive inside and outside of the classroom. And if you are like me, you were born to be a teacher. You really don't want to be anything else. You don't want to go to corporate. You don't want to do something else. I don't know. You enjoy working with students. I have found the best of both worlds with being able to start my own school. Um, I am tapping into like so many skills that I did not realize that I have, right? But anyway, let's go ahead on and get into this video. We are gonna be talking about your advisory board now and i'm calling this the board of advisors why because even if you have a for-profit business you still can have a board of advisors and a board of advisors would be different from your board members if you had a non-profit organization so if you have a non-profit then you would have a board of directors right and they are responsible for the governance of that said non-profit um, in addition, though, you can have a board of advisors. These are people who may not have the same legal responsibility to the nonprofit, but they can be there to advise you and most certainly help you. Um, in addition, this type of board, a board of advisors, could also be put in place for a school that is for profit. All right. And I would say you definitely want these people on your board or if you can have them. So I've come up with a list of about 18 different people um, that has a certain skill set that you might want to think about adding to your board. OK. And when you're thinking about these people or you're thinking about people you might want to ask, Think about the holes in uh, your management team, right? Maybe the skill sets that you or your staff may not have. Um, think about the things that's like so expensive for you to invest in that maybe because your board of uh, advisor has that skill set, they will actually donate that. So that's kind of the purpose of having a board of advisors. Um, a group of people who are experts in things that you are not that can help you when you need it. Um, definitely who, if they are willing to share their gifts and talents, they definitely can make things um, easier or less expensive for you. All right. So like I said, I just have a list right here of those people and I am going to just kind of go down this list and then maybe tell you a little bit why you might want to ask somebody uh, with this type of a skill set. So number one, you might want to have someone with a legal background, right? That's obvious. You are doing a, a school, so you are filling out um, contracts. You are uh, becoming a business legally, right? So if they have that legal background, they may be able to do some of these filings for you. They may be able to tell you what is the best structure for where you are right now. So if you have um, someone or you know someone who is um, has some type of a legal background, it could be an attorney or they could be a paralegal. All you want is someone who has that knowledge, right? And who can steer you in the right direction. So that might be someone you would um, ask to be on your board of advisors. Someone who works in HR, 
again as you're building your school you're not going to have an hr department but you definitely want to be able to have these job descriptions you definitely want to know how um, to go out and find these different people and uh, hr experts a lot of times they are really um well versed and looking at resumes and saying hey yes this fits what you're looking for or what you're not looking for they can help you build out those those job descriptions um, and tell you the best places maybe to look for to hire those people um, a PR person I'm gonna tell you right now if you know a friend I have a friend this is awesome <laughs> PR or public relations um, a lot of times they have like these connections out in like the uh, media and so forth, or they know how to get you exposure out there, right? And it can be very expensive. Um, not to say that I invested that type of money in one, but certainly if I knew someone who had that background, who would share those, those talents and gifts with me, I definitely would because marketing and getting your vision out there is one of the most expensive things. And it's one of those things that you can't afford, but you cannot not afford it, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because at the end of the day, people have to know who you are. Um, and that you one have a service and then they want to be able to trust you with their most prized possession their student right so someone who's in that public relation field could potentially help you to get your voice out there to let um, different maybe media outlets whether it's the newspaper whether it's the television station local stations local radio stations sometimes they might have the skills that are needed to help facilitate facilitate you getting um, onto one of those platforms to really discuss uh, your vision your school and all of that good stuff um what i call is community celebrities these are well-known people in your community why would you want one of them on your team well duh because they know everybody right they know everybody they know what all of the needs are right and word of mouth is like one of the most effective forms of advertising right and so these are the people who can speak for you even when no one knows who you are and you don't like to get the mic and talk in front of everybody or whatever this person because everybody knows them they probably already have like all of this trust built up in their community and because they know your vision because they agree with your vision and then some of that will help facilitate a little connection you know it's like oh such and such no such and such okay so you know she might be on the up and up or you know what his program might be good so you definitely want to look into community celebrities uh, now don't force it like you still want them to have a heartbeat behind education and for education right you don't want to just fill this up with people who are maybe well known but yet still don't have a heart uh, for the youth so make sure there's a good balance there um politicians and you know what they might be considered community celebrities politicians are really good um, you might not get them to be able to uh, actually sit on your board because this time some of them think they all big or whatever. But here's the good thing. I found out my about my first grant because of the politician. And I am working with another organization right now. We were out at this state of this city address and our senator sent a representative from his office and we proceeded to tell him about this said organization and so forth. And he was like, we have a grant coming up. Um, it, the paperwork or application has to be filled out by March 10. So they actually know when money is coming down. And then, although I don't like lobby, but, you know, sometimes they can talk in your interest. Um, I receive money because of or my kids have help with tuition because of school choice so my senator please know um we like school choice okay and my families who are not rich families like school choice if they didn't have school choice they couldn't afford to come to my program so 
um, even though you may not, you may or may not get them to actually sit on your board. Uh, definitely you can introduce yourself to them, let them know what you're doing and it never hurts to ask, right? Parents, you want parents. Again, um, you parents can be some of your most effective allies. And when it comes to word of mouth, again, parents talk to other parents. You want them to be able to speak up on your behalf. You want them to be able to say, oh yeah, I trust that teacher. Um, he or she has been doing a great job in whatever capacity, you know, that they know you. Or if it's just, oh yeah, I sit on their advisory board. So I advise them. I tell them, um, you know, what it is that as a parent I am looking for, right? So you can even survey them to help you figure out exactly what your program needs to look like to meet the needs of the particular community. Um, teachers, you need other teachers, you know, unless you are well versed in all of the disciplines, you need other experts. Um, they can talk to you about what curriculum looks like, right? Or what may be best. So parents and teachers are um, other uh, great people to have on your advisory board. Counselors. Okay, can we say counselors? I can't afford a counselor, right? However, I do have a friend who is a counselor and she does volunteer her time. She's on my advisory board. Now, is she there every day or every week? No, but it's better than nothing. I don't have a, a counselor, period. Um, and she is a counselor that is also very well versed in like transcripts and knowing what the kids need. So I make sure when my kiddos get to high school, I make sure like my uh, um, course catalog is sufficient um, for one, the state and two, um, different colleges that they are wanting to attend. IT people, again, I can employ an IT person. Um, I do have uh, one who works with me on an as needed basis. Mm, I wonder if he would actually sit on my advisory board and do it for free. <laughs> well, listen, it is like he's on that board because he does not charge me what he actually could. So once again, someone who knows about IT and Having someone from IT from a school system, that is how I get computers. <laughs> but it's it's not a it's not a secret. Every so often they get rid of equipment. And if you know somebody that knows someone, then you can be that someone. And I have been that someone. So IT people, particularly if they already work in a school setting, they can keep an eye out for you and get you some hardware as needed. An accountant. Ooh, okay, this is very, very, very needed, okay? So the accountant that I had, um, well, I still have her now, but she started out giving me lots of advice for free. She basically did my first audit for probably about $300. And if you guys know anything about an audit, they can cost anywhere from three to whatever thousand dollars, okay? So they are very expensive. And she did my first one for little to nothing. The next time she did it, it was more, but it wasn't as much as she could have charged, right? And she did that one. She actually has a heartbeat for what I do. She has a child who has um, some disabilities. So, you know, she wanted to see me succeed. So again, that's where an accountant can come in. Um, an accountant could also do your bookkeeping, um, but they can't be like the same. Like, so since she was doing the audit and so forth, she, she does not keep my books as well. So if you have a bookkeeper, that could be um, another person that you would want to have on your advisory board because they have a skill set um, to be able to make sure that your numbers are lining up. Um, that's the other thing. When you're starting a business now, you, you want to make sure you keep everything on the up and up. Website designers, graphic or graphic organizers. <laughs> website designers and, and graphic designers as well. Those things can really be expensive. You know, there's one teacher who I believe invested about maybe six or $7,000 in her website website and it is amazing but i can't put that much into it right so imagine if you were able to get someone like that on your team who could give you like this a first class website and marketing or things that tools that, that will help you to really um um 
find and grow your business or help people find you and grow your business so that would be amazing graphic designers you know once again that's a part of your marketing i told you guys it could be super super expensive um but they're think about them making you some memes or you know facebook or instagram posts wherever it is that you're going to put your business on they um uh, doing some things for you that's going to be within your brand and that's another important thing yeah you can just go and get posts from anywhere right but you want to have a consistent brand so to be able to have someone like that on your team who is able to put that together for you it is awesome also i hope you guys kind of caught what i just said sometimes these people will sit on your board and not do it for free but they will do it for way less so i always go in for could you sit on my board and advise me for free free <laughs> and um, or give me whatever your gifts and talents are but that doesn't always happen but don't limit them you know if even if you're getting a nice size uh discount don't don't discount that if that makes sense <laughs> let's keep going content creators again having a blog can be really helpful um particularly if you know how to write for seo um you will eventually want to get some organic traffic i have not talked about that but i might do a video about that because i don't think we often leverage um things like our blog things like youtube as much as we really should and so um blogging is where it's at so having a content creator that can help you do those types of things or even write posts for you for your different platforms like facebook instagram and all of that and don't think you have to have a platform for everything find out where your people are like right now my people and my parents are on facebook so i do facebook um it's personal i have a personal youtube so that's really the things are like you're watching now that's my personal stuff i do talk about school stuff but it's not necessarily the school's youtube right however my facebook page I do have for the school then you um, want to also have business leaders who can influence charitable giving a lot of times um, people underestimate like just who's in your community and even if they're not some type of big wigs um, I know we like um, Home Depot like you know there's a Home Depot in most places or nearby most places did you know that everybody that works at a Home Depot can give up to three thousand dollars to a charity and the company will match that dollar for dollar up to three thousand dollars so imagine having someone like that on your advisory board who will donate $3,000 or you could be real clever in helping them to raise $3,000 for them to in turn give to your organization and then register that with their company so that the company can match that. They don't even have to be like big time. It could be managers. It can just be a store clerk. You want to be able to uh, leverage these people as much as you possibly can. Pastors are another good group. Like I am, it has not been always easy. Like one of the things when we people are looking for buildings, I always said, go and look for a church, right? Because it's one of the only buildings that is really like, in the community by the people of the community that's not being used during the day like it sits it sits empty six days a week and generally six days six nights a week because some people do have bible study right but for the most part like it is such a underutilized resource the church is and so having a pastor on your side, you can um, really cast that vision. Maybe he or she would grab hold of that and then um, help you by providing a place for your organization. Or even if they don't have um, the space for you or the facility that will meet your needs, they probably know other pastors within the community. So again, it is just, it is so much. And I think if I had it to do all over again, I would start with building a team around me. 
I did not start that. Okay. I did not start that. And I think because of that, it did make some things harder, right? But if you listen to anything that I say, it would be definitely once you kind of get the vision and you're able to articulate that, you're able to like post that on some type of presentation, then you start presenting it to people. And I call that vision casting. You start telling them what it is, your heartbeat behind why you're doing it and why you're talking to them, right? And so a lot of times people want to help. You just got to ask other nonprofit leaders. Once again, if you have questions about the nonprofit arena, who else, who better else to ask than other nonprofit leaders? And yet, even I'm working and I guess I need to do an update it video or whatever, but I'm working with another nonprofit now. Why? Because of the skill set that I have actually learned working um, the nonprofit school that I run. But um, we have an advisor from another nonprofit that she's not on the board, but she advises the board. And so um, to have someone there to be able to kind of just tell you different things or give you different insights, man, you do not know how needed it is. Credit unions, like, listen, credit unions have money too to give. So if you have a local credit union, um, you could go and let them know what you're doing. They might be able to help. If not, hey, they might be able to give you a bank account where you don't have to pay fees. So you never know until you actually ask or other financial experts, right? So I hope this has been a good list. I promise you, do not forsake <laughs> putting other people around you. Again, I when I'm doing these videos, I'm it's not even all about me going back and saying, what did I do? I ask myself, what would you do differently? What would you do better? And the one thing before I actually went out and applied for a nonprofit, a business license or any other stuff, I would have just really gotten a clear vision down and then tried to invite as many people to the table as possible and then cast vision to try to get people on board with what I was doing. I think I would have definitely gone a lot faster um, had I done that, although I am not complaining because my path was definitely blessed, but um, I would have definitely done that. Um, I did that on a smaller scale, but I did not have this exhaustive list. So hopefully that has been helpful. If you know anyone that we can add to the list, go ahead on and drop it below. All right, until next time, here's the next video.